Now that you've gotten permission to shoot your video and made your schedule for the day, it's time to plan what you're going to film. Shot selection plays a big part in how you use the language of film to communicate in your video. So thinking about the shots you want to get will be a big help in getting your ideas across. Okay, what's a shot? A shot is basically the industry term for a camera angle. Different angles have different names and different uses. Before the day of filming, the director and cinematographer traditionally get together and go through the script. As they do this, they talk about how they intend to film each of the scenes, making a list of the shots they want to make sure to get when they're filming. This is called, yep, a shot list. Making a shot list can be extremely helpful. On the set, a lot of things will be happening in a big hurry and it can get confusing quickly. Planning the shots you want to get will help ensure that you're covered each of your scenes. Wait, covering a scene, huh? Coverage is film speak. To cover a scene means to make sure you filmed it from all of the angles you'll need to edit it together into something that looks good and makes sense. Good coverage will usually involve filming the same scene from a few different angles so that you'll have some choices when you edit. Let's talk about a couple of the most common shots. The three basic shots are called close, medium, and wide. This is what they look like. This is a close shot. See how much of the frame I occupy? Now let's compare that to a wide shot. Hey out there! This is a wide shot. Notice how much more room there is in the frame. Talk about your wide open spaces. If you begin a scene with a wide shot, it's called an establishing shot because it establishes the new location by showing you a big wide view of it right at the beginning. It's another way to help your film make sense by giving the audience visual clues. In between these two, we have a medium shot, like this. Regardless of whether you use the zoom or reposition the camera, close, medium, and wide shots imply a distance between the viewer and the subject. It's up to you to determine how you want to use that proximity to tell your story. There are a lot of implied meanings associated with certain types of shots. Let's try what's called an up angle or worm's eye shot. See? Positioning the camera on the ground looking up at the subject lets the subject tower over you. This can make your subject seem powerful and larger than life. The opposite is true of a down angle, also called an overhead or bird's eye view. Placing the camera above the subject looking down on them makes them seem smaller and less significant. More than likely, you will sometimes want more than one character on the screen at the same time. This is called a two shot and it's your basic shot for dialogue between two characters. A two shot can be two people facing each other in profile, looking over the shoulder of one character at another character, or anything else where both are on the screen at the same time. You may not always want both characters on the screen at the same time, but you can still imply they're in the same space using a technique called shot, reverse, shot. Shot, reverse, shot is actually a pair of two different shots that get cut together. If in one shot, character A is looking off to the right, and in the second shot, character B is looking off to the left, you can imply that they're looking at each other. This is a great way to get around a scheduling nightmare. If your leading lady is running late, but your leading man has to leave in 10 minutes to get to his soccer game, and you still haven't filmed that important conversation they have in the hall, you can make it seem like you have them both in the same place with shot, reverse shot. Just shoot all of your leading man's lines with him looking in one direction. When your leading lady gets there, you can film her saying all of her lines looking the other way, and then cut them together. Everyone watching the movie will assume they were together all along. There are lots of other shots you can use, but the main idea is this. Be aware that certain shots can subconsciously communicate ideas to the audience, so be sure to choose your shots carefully. 
When you're planning your shots, you obviously have lots of choices. You're making a video. There's a lot of freedom involved. But there's one big rule about planning your shots. This is called the 180 degree rule. The 180 rule exists to help your film make sense when it gets cut together. Because you're cutting between different camera angles in a scene, it's possible your audience might get confused about spatial relationships. Wasn't he on the other side of her? I thought he was pointing at Jim, not Sarah. That kind of thing. It's a lot of information for a brain to process. So to keep your audience from being disoriented, you have the 180 rule. Simply put, if two characters are in a scene together, no matter where you move the camera or what angle you cut to next, the same character should always be on the same side of the screen. The best way to learn the 180 rule is with an example. Here is an overhead view of your set. Here are your actors, and here is the camera. This is the 180 degree line. In your first shot, you're looking at character A in the foreground on the left, who is waving at character B in the background. It will look like this. Now, you want to get closer to character B. You could put the camera here, and the shot would look like this. Now, let's cut between the two of them. Kind of confusing, huh? It looks wrong. Let's look at the floor plan again. Here was the camera for the first shot, and this is where you put the camera for the second shot. See? You cross the 180 degree line to get that second shot. Once you take a shot on one side of the line, the next shot will make better sense if you move or rotate the camera any angle within those 180 degrees of motion. Let's try that close up again, but staying on the correct side of the 180. It would look like this. Cutting back and forth between them looks like this. See? Much better. Your audience has a much better understanding of the spatial relationships. If you want to get advanced with the 180 rule, you can cross to the other side as long as the camera moves during your shot to the other side of the line. But any shot you cut to next will have to follow the rule again. You won't be able to use any shot on the original side of the line unless the camera travels back within a shot to the other side. You'll notice that we use drawings of the shots to give you examples. These are called storyboards, and they're also a useful thing to make along with your shot list. Storyboards don't have to be very complicated. See? Even stick figures will work. The point is to make one storyboard for every shot you want to get while making your video. Putting them together in order of the story will give you a preview of what the finished movie will look like. And just like in that last example, it's a good way to check if what you're planning to shoot is going to cut together well in the editing room. You can also bring the storyboards to the set. Sometimes it helps to explain the shot you want to get with pictures. Remember, drawing skills are not required so long as the idea behind each shot is clear in the storyboard. Okay, that's a lot of new stuff. And that's definitely a lot of planning you've already done before you even started rolling. But trust me, your videos will be much easier to film and edit, and the overall quality of your work will improve by using these techniques. Congratulations. If you've got your script, your cast, your crew, your locations, 